What's up, YouTube? It's your boy John from Project Ellsworth, and I am back with you today to give you another Top 20 for 2020. That is the horror movie series that was created for YouTube by Joe the Horror Man and Jason from Horrific Nightmares. This installment is 2000s Slasher Films. Hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. Let's just jump right into this. Coming in at number 20 for me is Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. I haven't watched this one in a while, but this was a pretty cool movie. This was basically the dude is going through the motions and explaining what slashers do in horror movies, what the setup is, you know, what steps they take to do so. It's a pretty, it's a very different spin on uh, slasher movies and horror movies in general. That's a pretty good movie. I enjoyed that. Been a while. I need to watch that again. Coming in at number 19 is the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. Mountain Men Cannibal Dudes. Pretty good movie. I did a review on this uh, movie on my channel a couple of months ago. You can check that out. I thought that was pretty good. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence of whether I like the remake or the original film of The Hills Have Eyes more. I kind of, it's almost equal for me. Next up at number 18 is Murder Set Pieces. This movie is about a photographer who goes and kills hookers and photographs them. It's a pretty interesting film. This movie is considered to be pretty extreme. I thought it was extreme, but I didn't think it was any. I've seen worse, I'll put it that way. All right, coming in at number 17 is the last horror movie. In this film, the guy actually is basically making snuff films and sticking the snuff films inside of video uh, VHS tape boxes and putting them on rental shelves. I believe that's what it was. It's been a while since I watched that one too. All right, coming in at number 16 is Blood Feast 2. I found this movie at a horror convention many, many moons ago. This is actually really good. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. This is about a caterer who kills people and then dismembers bodies and puts their bodies in the food that he's uh, cooking for different parties and what, uh, what have you. I believe in this particular one, it was a uh, wedding reception, I believe. Yeah, this is a pretty, pretty cool movie. A lot of blood, a lot of nudity, a whole lot of bad acting, but I really enjoyed that movie. Coming in at number 15 is 2006 Turistas. This film, if I remember correctly, is about basically someone is killing people to get their organs to sell on the black market. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that was the purpose. I know he was killing people for their organs and I believe I remember it was to sell them on the black market. Not absolutely positive of that, but pretty darn sure that that's what it was. Again, I have not watched most of these movies in a really long time, but I have seen them all. Yeah, Teresa's is pretty good. All right, next up was quite a shock to me that I actually didn't own this movie individually is Freddy vs. Jason. I'm pretty sure when I started buying box sets that I got rid of Freddy vs. Jason. I know I owned it, so I do own it, but I own it on the uh, Friday the 13th box set that has every Friday the 13th movie in it. So I do own the movie, I just don't own it individually anymore. I'm pretty positive. There was a thing at Best Buy a uh, few years back where you could trade in used DVDs and every used DVD that you traded in, they gave you a little $5 coupon towards a Blu-ray. They were really pushing Blu-rays when Blu-rays first came around and that was what happened to that movie, I'm sure. All right, next up at number 13 is All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. I also did a review on this movie, or review for this movie on my channel. This is really good too. I, w I, I thought this was a great movie. Um, I don't want to get into too much of this movie. There's a very serious twist at the end of this. This was good. Check out my review. Check out that movie. It was pretty awesome. All right, coming in at number 12 is Rob Zombie's uh, feature film debut, House of a Thousand Corpses. 
I really enjoyed this movie. I believe that this is hands down my favorite Rob Zombie movie. Um, I think that his film career started off fantastic with this. Devil's Rejects was strong. Halloween was decent. But then they all seem to decline. He, I, I, I don't know what happened to the Rob Zombie uh, mindset. Everybody became just... I don't know, trailer trash, just terrible characters he creates anymore. And that, not saying that the characters in this movie are great either, they're serial killers. But I thought that that was his best work, so that is why that made my list. Coming in at number 11 is Trick or Treat. Anthology movie, he's the pretty much the only mainstay throughout the film. Uh, Sam. This was cool, man. I really enjoyed this movie. I recently actually just bought the NECA figure for Sam and I will be doing a boxing, uh, unboxing video for that in the future, but that has nothing to do with this video. This was really good. If you guys like anthology movies, this is a better one. It's a really good movie. All right, next up at number 10 is High Tension. Another fantastic movie with another mind-blowing twist at the end, so I can't really give you too many details about this movie either, but this is a really good movie. If you have not seen this movie, I highly recommend seeing this. Coming in at, I keep forgetting what number I'm on. Coming in at number nine is a 2002 film called May. As you can see here, I got this for $1.99 at a video store when it was going out of business. Uh, I, knew, I knew nothing about this movie when I bought it. The only thing I knew was what I read on the back of it, but for $1.99, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm pretty sure that they had it on sale for $1.99 and I got it for a dollar. Because I was in there um, right when this place was getting ready to close, and I think that this was everything in there was half off what the sticker said. So even at a dollar ninety-nine, you can't go wrong with this movie. This movie's awesome. She is basically killing people and making, uh, using their body parts to create uh, another person. It's very twisted. This is a really good movie too. Low budget film, really awesome though. I think Ben from Cadaver Club was talking about that movie on one of our streams. That movie's fantastic. Alright, coming in at number 8 is Eli Roth's Hostel. This is probably my favorite Eli Roth movie. I was a very big fan of Cabin Fever, and I really enjoy The Green Inferno, but I love Hostel. This is just a really good movie. Um, very hard for people to watch. I know a few people who had a very hard time with this movie, my wife being one of them. I don't find it hard to watch. I mean, it's it's got some pretty, pretty rough stuff in it. Uh, obviously, tough subject matter. But it's a good movie, nonetheless. I thought Hostel was great. Okay, coming in at number seven. Speaking of Rob Zombie, we are at Rob Zombie's Halloween. This movie actually came out the day my son was born. Uh, I liked Rob Zombie's take on Michael Myers. Um, I was not real crazy about the uh, white trash family that he had. And... Sometimes I think that the backstory is really cool. Other times I think he should have left it out because it kind of re ruins the mystique of Michael Myers. So I'm kind of on the fence with that. It just, it falls in line with the, all the Rob Zombie movies, just the unnecessary, I mean, look, I don't care. Foul language is foul language. We all use it. We all know what it is. But he's crazy with that stuff. Just the, the mistreatment of people. It, it's, it's a little bit much. It almost feels like not only does it not add to the story, it kind of, for me, takes away, it detracts from the, the movie that he's creating because you're so caught up in the foul language and the unnecessary bullshit that he has or he puts in his movies that you, you lose pacing of the movie, you lose track of the actual story that he's trying to tell. Whatever, that's enough about Rob Zombie. All right, coming in at number six is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. I actually like this movie more than I like the remake, and I really like the remake. I thought this movie was very, very good. Um, definitely not as good as the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but this gives a lot of backstory, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the details that lead up to it. It's the direct prequel to the remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So this gives you the whole. St it outlines the story of what takes place in that movie. So this is awesome. Coming in at number five is the remake of Friday the 13th. A lot of people, I just, my video for the ranking of this franchise posted two days ago, and I'm surprised I haven't caught very much heat because of how high I have this movie ranked. 
This is ranked number five for me in that entire franchise. I love this movie. I love this remake. Mirrors was awesome as Jason. I absolutely love the Friday the 13th remake, and I really wish that they could get their stuff together and make a sequel to this movie with Derek Mears, return, uh, Derek Mears returning as Jason. He wants to do it. He told me that he wanted to do it years ago uh, on Twitter. I was actually having a conversation with him. So it's a shame. You got the guy who wants to do it. He loves being Jason. They can't get their legal stuff together and just, you know, the bottom line is all the fans want another movie. So let them guys hash this out. Figure it out. Make your money. Let the fans have what they want. So Friday the 13th, it's an awesome movie. Coming in at number four is Hatchet. Victor Crowley, Kane Hodder. This movie's fantastic. Old school American horror, the holy grail of slasher films. Well, that's a bit much. But yeah, this definitely feels like old school American horror. Very good movie. Victor Crowley, they, I think he's made um, four movies now. Green. Um, what the heck is that guy's first name? Now I'm drawing a blank. Green, I know is his last name. Adam Green. Adam Green has made four Hatchet movies now. The first one is definitely my favorite. I love the Victor Crowley character. Uh, hopefully there's more of those to come in the future as well. Coming in at number three for me is The Collector. This was another very pleasant surprise for me. When I bought this movie, I knew nothing about it. Never even saw the trailer for it. And I absolutely love this movie. This movie's awesome. It's very well made. It looks really nice. The sound, the, uh, the soundtrack in this movie is really, or the score in this movie is really, really good. Really creepy. The character, the, cr the collector himself is very creepy. Awesome movie. That, a lot of people may not have seen that one. Check that one out too. That's a fantastic movie. Coming in at number two. This one I was kind of on the fence of whether I would even call this a slasher movie or not, to be honest with you, because I believe one person dies in it. And that, you're pushing the limits, the boundaries of what a slasher movie could be. The Strangers. There's only one person dies in this movie, he dies at the end of the movie. But this movie was so good in my eyes that I had to f figure out a way to put this on a list somewhere. And I didn't make it to the Home Invasion movies. I wish I did because that probably would have been number one on my list to be honest with you. I love that movie. And the sequel to that movie, it was years later they finally put a sequel to that movie out. That one's really good too. But I absolutely love this one. I thought The Strangers was great. And coming in at number one, this was actually a pretty easy pick for me. When I looked over, I go to a particular website. I don't even remember what it is. It's some sort of chronological website that has all the horror movies ever made listed in it. And I looked for the whole 10 year period of the 2000s. I looked everything over, wrote everything down, and it was very, it was glaringly obvious for me that Wolf Creek was gonna be number one for me. I love Wolf Creek. I love Wolf Creek and I love Wolf Creek 2. I can't even believe I'm going to say this. I have not watched the series yet, but I do have Shudder. So I got to sit down and watch that series. I'm in the middle of watching Creep Show right now. When I'm done with Creep Show, I'm going to go to Wolf Creek. This is fantastic. The original Wolf Creek movie is fantastic. It's creepy. The character Mick Taylor in this movie is, he's awesome. It, it, it's, I don't even know what else to say about it. It's people <clears throat> traveling on vacation in the uh, Australian outback and they run into the wrong guy. This movie, is, it, it, this is another one. There's some stuff in here that's a little bit tough to stomach for some people. It doesn't bother me, but I'm a grizzled horror veteran. Watch Wolf Creek if you haven't seen it. Uh, I, I have to assume that it wouldn't be hard to find. This is old. I bought this movie a long time ago. I bought it right after it came out, to be honest with you. Uh, so I've had this DVD for many, many years. Um, check out Wolf Creek. It's fantastic. If you like horror movies, you're not going to be disappointed in that one at all, specifically slasher movies. All right, that's going to do it for me. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you have been enjoying my content up to this point, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and then ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day. And thank you for watching. Take care, folks.